Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing another movie review this week. It's a fantasy film that came out on May 20th, 1988, from executive producer George Lucas and director Ron Howard, simply called Willow, which is the name of a dwarf, which is a story about him finding an abandoned child that was left um, in the village, you know, and they're trying to find a way to save her from an evil sorceress. So they were on their journey to find someone to take care of her. And that's what led to a, a rogue swordsman, also an aging sorceress, which turned into a possum, and of course, a battle that's about to happen. And I really love this movie. I saw this as a kid. I think I remember seeing this in theaters uh, when I was three years old. So it would have been at the time uh, with my family. Um, and I remember watching this many times on home video and on cable as well. It was on the Disney Channel. And I actually taped it one time. But then I lost the tape. Um, that is until I bought the DVD uh, back in 2008. At Target, yeah, for a good price though, it was only nine ninety nine, great deal. Um, but that's been long out of print. And by the way, I, I still have the DVD, but it, but I didn't bring it out. I just figured, you know, I'm just gonna keep it that way. But I did bought the Blu-ray recently, and this is a brand new Blu-ray release from Disney um, under uh, Lucasfilm Limited. This was actually a re-release of the 2013. Blu-ray from Fox, um, which unfortunately went out of print for a few years. I, I was going to pick that up a long time ago, but I never had a chance. I mean, I think the problem was, you know, I, I went ahead with buying other titles, like the Isle of Lucy collection and all that other stuff, that I was hoping the price would go down for this movie, like maybe it'll go down to $9.99, but that never happened, and that sucks. Uh, so I did feature the same cover arts as the previous Blu-ray, just under the new uh, look that they put in, you know, with the multi-screen edition, Blu-ray digital code and stuff, your typical Disney uh, packaging. Um, but as you can see in the back, um, they did put all the features, uh, all which were from the previous 2013 Blu-ray, and they also ported the features from the 2001 DVD, which I, of course I do have as well. Um, yeah, the cover art does look sort of like a uh, a Lord of the Rings type, and I can see why. I mean, this is another fantasy feature that's set in Middle Earth, so I could definitely see how they were going for that. But I kind of prefer the original poster as shown. So. Um, but it does have all the features, like I said, and, and it's really nice to see all of them in there. I think the only thing that was missing is the photo gallery. But either way, um, I'm happy that everything was there. It has a nice commentary by Warwick Davis, the actor who played Willow. For those who don't know, um, he was known for playing an Ewok named Wicked from uh, Return of the Jedi and, and a few of the uh, Ewok films before he was settled for this role. And it's cool because, I mean, this is the first time we actually got to see him without wearing the, the Ewok costume. So I'm happy for that. Plus you got Bell Kilmer in the movie too. Because at the time he was doing films like Real Genius, uh, Top Gun. So this is uh, another, another good uh, role for him. I mean, he was uh, very charming and very fun to watch. Not to mention that he actually married uh, Joanne Wiley. Uh, for those who know, yeah, for those who don't know, um, she's an English actress and she's been in other films. So they both got married uh, while they were filming this. I, I think it was later in March when they got married. So they fell in love, uh, and she plays the. Um, the warrior in the movie where she was just uh, actually uh, related to uh, the evil sorceress. Yeah. 
He also got Billy Barfy no longer with us, but he was a great actor. Been known for doing a lot of work. And including the Yeah, he did a lot of work and all that. Even got Tony Cox in the movie too. As well as um, Kevin Pollack and uh, Wick Overton. Yeah. Uh, Gene Marsh, by the way, and and even the even Patricia Hayes. So, it's a great cast that they got. Um, I really love it. So you also got other features too, like the making of the adventure with Ron, with Ron Howard, the director. You also got uh, from morph to morphine with Dennis Murren, yeah, who was uh, who was the head of. Um, who actually worked on the special effects from IOM, Industrial Light and Magic, so it was cool. It even shows you that, you know, how they did that effect. Um, you have mad paintings on how they did that, and they even show like a personal video diary for Warwick Davis himself called Willow the Unlikely Hero. I thought that was really cool because he just, he just takes a uh, a camcorder and starts filming all of this, you know, while they're on set and they're just working on the movie. So it's behind the scenes stuff. I love that. It was really cool. So this is a nice uh, Blu ray set to own, as we see. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it has a plain blue disc, unlike the 2014 release, but hey, at least it came in a regular case instead of a Eagle Box ones. And also to note, though, the transfer is very stunning. It looks even better than ever. It almost looks like a new movie, too. It's basically the same transfer as the previous release. And surprisingly enough, the MGM logo is fully restored. The way it was meant to be, because they were the distributor for this film. This was at the time when Alan Ladd Jr. was the executor of the company, since he used to work with Fox. So he joined in and... And he had a spectacular relationship with George Lucas. And, and of course, Ron Howard had you know, worked with George Lucas since American Graffiti, so, so they both really have the, so they both had the same relationship just as you know Lucas had worked with Spielberg, because that's his best friend. So no matter what, they always uh, worked together as a team. It stars Warwick Davis. Val Kilmer, Joanne Wiley, Gene March, Patricia Hayes, Billy Barfy, Pat Walsh, Devon O'Hurley, um, Kevin Pollack, Rick Overton, David J. Steinberg, um, Malcolm Dixon, and Tony Cox. It's written by Bob Dolman. For those who don't know, he was the writer of WKRP in Cincinnati, the TV series, with executive producer George Lucas joining in, and with also with producer Joe Johnston and Ni Nigel uh, Wuerl, and it's directed by Ron Howard. Even though he's known for playing Opie in the Annie Griffin show, as well as uh, the TV show uh, Happy Days, and he was also in the movie American Graffiti, you know, working with uh, George Lucas. He's been known for directing films like uh, Splash, Cocoon, Gun Ho, and Night Shift. The movie begins where we meet an evil sorceress named Queen Barmoda, who decided to, to use a prophecy to take a female child with a special birthmark that will have held the downfall. She suddenly imprisons all the pregnant women around to realm to prevent her fulfillment. So when the child was born, the mother begs the midwife to hide the infant and smuggle her to safety, just escaping from the Narmar castle. So that way they will come around unnoticed. But the mother is being executed. And the midwife is being hunted down by no more hounds, known as the Deaf Dogs, 
but knowing that she cannot escape, she decided to set the baby by making a makeshift raft of grass. Yeah, it's like a nest. And be able to send her down to the river just when she was about to be attacked by those dogs. Hoping that while Bramorda was furious about the escape, she sends her daughter Shosha, who's played by Joanne Wiley, and her army commander, General Kai, to find the baby. So the river suddenly goes all the way down to the village of Nawain, which is a dwarf's village, and that's where we meet a young, kind farmer who's also a conjurer, but he's, he also loves to do a lot of magician tricks, so he's, he's like a magician, hoping that someday he'll become a real sorcerer named Willow of good who's played by Warwick Davis. He also has a wife named Kaya along with two children who suddenly fell in love with the baby as they found her uh, near the river. Um, and then for a while Willow started to um, take some resistance because he was afraid that you know they the baby doesn't belong to them and it probably leads to danger which it did. But at, after a while he did uh, grow into love her and hoping that maybe they'll take care of her for a while, but even though they can't do that because, well, you know how that's going to turn out. Because that's when the Narkmar dogs um, came along and they started to attack the village. So the only way to find a way for her, for her safety was to, to have uh, the High Oldwin, who's the one's wizard, who's played by Billy Barfee, to commission Willard to go on the journey to actually not only for the potential of of the magic that he's going to use but also to find a way to save the baby so with the help of um, all the rest of the doors joining in so they had to go across to a all the way straight to the Dakini crossroads so once they got there that's when they meet uh, a human warrior who was trapped in a crow cage named Mad Mordigan, who was played by Val Kilmer. Um, now, the rest of the party decided to find a way to have Mad Mordigan take care of the baby, so that way they can go home immediately. But Willow just couldn't trust him, so he figured, you know, he might as well just stay along with his friend, um, Migosh, because they refused to do so. And decided to spend the night, hoping that you know maybe they might find a way to to help, even though you know he's still trapped in there. You know he wanted water and all that, but yeah, you know, they couldn't. But that is until the army that's led by Ark um, Falbire, who's played by um, Gavin O'Hurley, um, came by and. They're starting to march against uh, Bamoda, and Willis relentlessly decided to free Mad Mardigan and hand the baby over to him, even though he still couldn't trust him, but hoping maybe he would. But suddenly, the baby is being stolen by a group of brownies, by a duel named, who's of course a <laughs> comic relief, Rule and Fangine, played by Kevin Pollock and Rick Overton. They chase down the brownies. Yeah, it leads to a bigger chase with all the other armies going around. But they're being rescued by a fairy queen, Cheryl Andrea, who's played by Maria Hovoy. Um, Cheryl Andrea tells Willow that the baby is actually Adora Dannon, who's a future empress of the Tyre Asling. So she's a princess. But it's also Bamoda's bane. So she gives Willow her wrong and assigns him to do the task of helping Alora to fulfill her destiny. So Willow sends Migosh home, and the two of the brownies, Frank, Jean, and Rue, are assigned to help Willow find a sorceress named Finn Rizel. Yeah, an, an aging sorceress that suddenly became. You're going to love this a possum because it was part of the curse that Bermuda had gave her. 
Um, so Willow was trying to find a way to actually uh, command all all these uh, magical spells to actually bring uh, Rizel to life, but suddenly fails too because for a while, you know, just when he was trying to go for those words, at first she became like a bird, and then later she became a goat. <laughs> Yeah, so that was going around. But suddenly they're being trapped by Sosha and, and the rest of the army. It was Matt Mardigan joining in because he also was in disguise as a woman. Yeah. And then it led to other troubles too because suddenly uh, once, they, uh, <laughs> once they're trying to escape, um, he was actually... Um, suddenly got possessed by that magical dust by the brownies and that's where it suddenly changed his uh, personality like he's starting to use all that love poetry so I think it was a love <laughs> magical dust that he was given so he was trying to go all the way just trying to take the baby out of Sosha but eventually she <laughs> McMorrigan actually went straight to Sosha and was ready to fall in love with her <laughs> but Will decided to go in and try to take the baby anyway so they escaped, um, as it seems, and then they want to go all the way down to to the snow slope into the mountains. Yeah, they're trying to escape as much as they can, so it's almost like a roller coaster ride that they have to go straight in. I love that scene too. It's like they're just going all the way down. It's like man, they they're like having the like they were having a fun ride, but it was very scary, and I can see why he was having trouble. But of course, um, they were trapped again, and that's and as they uh, continue to go on to the journey, they arrive at the castle of Ty Aslan that's only to be discovered by by trolls around. Yes, there's a lot of trolls, and they're being attacked by them. And this is this is pretty interesting too because when they took one of the trolls, they actually turned him into a two-headed monster ready to attack uh, Phil with the rest of the army and so yes both Willow along with Matt Martigan and the rest were about to um, attack with a a war battle that was happening and going on so unfortunately uh, Sosha took the baby along with the rest of the army and they said to take her back to Bermuda which then Bermuda suddenly turns everyone into pigs. But Willow decided to escape by using the power for Rizel. And this is one of the uh, the biggest moments of them all, all done by IOM, was how, you know, just so he can get it right, he finally found a way to um, restore Finn Rizel into human form. So that's where you get to see her become... Yeah, first a uh, an ostrich, a turtle, a tiger, all the way until the human form. So there you go. And that's how she became. And then Rizel starts to help Willow try to find a way to stop Bamoda from coming by taking the baby and try to use her power. So it was a battle between the two. Which also led to the battle to Willow. And then the rest of the army, you know, with Mad Mardigan, even the social joins in. But Mad Mardigan and Ark uh, started to form a plan to actually stop Immorta and the rest of the army. And they did. So they had a battle as it goes around. Um, Willow had stopped um, Bermuda. And then everything was set free. So now. Mad Mardigan, along with Sosha, decided to take the baby. And Willow and the rest of the village, you know, they, you know, they, they had a wonderful time. They, just, they're out to celebrate. So everything was going great for his journey. But he was also rewarded with a magic book to aid him to become a sorcerer. So now, he, he comes home just our heroes broke him and performs a true magic trick and there you go because <laughs> now he's going to become a magician 
and the sorcerer, as we all know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's a fun movie. I I loved it. Um, it definitely has a fairy tale feel to it. That that was well done for its time. I mean, it's a shame that it got mixed reviews from critics. I guess people were expecting something better from George Lucas after Howard the Duck. Which, I thought Howard the Duck was a guilty pleasure, in my opinion. I didn't think it was that bad. I mean, it's not perfect. I, I understand that. But the fact that he was doing an adaptation of a Marvel comic, I thought that was pretty interesting. Because this is before Marvel became pretty big these days with, with movies. So this, this was an early idea. So I, I know George Lucas was coming up with something new. Because he also did Labyrinth too. That was another fantasy uh, by uh, Jim Henson. But this was a new process. And you know the fact that they had a lot of great special effects joining in. All of which were done by Industrial Light of Magic. The, the special effects with uh, the fairy queen named Cheryl Andrea, I mean, that was done very well. I mean, it, it was very beautiful, too. Like, you, had, you see all these fairies around joining in. Um, they look exactly like her and how bright it looks. And the fairy just went straight into Willow. That was amazing. And um, But it does have a mix of practical effects that they had. Um, all well done, and um, and they actually set the location. You know, they they shot this movie at L Street Studios in Hertfordshire, England, as well as Wales and New Zealand. So it does have that that particular field of Middle Earth, you know, just like Lord of the Rings. Um, but I thought Warwick Davis did a an amazing job as Willow Ulfgrove. In fact, this is definitely one of his best performances I've seen from him. It really shows that he can actually play a role exactly what we expected after playing the, an Ewok. And I always loved him ever since. Because as years follow, he went on to do films like uh, Leprechaun, and as well as Harry Potter, and some, some, some more of the Star Wars prequels and stuff. So, and yes, he even got to be in the movie, um, in costume, by the way, but voiced by the late, great Alan Rickman, um, called uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, so it was cool to see him. So, And he really enjoyed uh, this process. He loved the movie, and he was very proud of it. I love when Willow does all of his magic tricks, like, for example, you know, he, yes, he takes, um, a log and he puts it straight into his arm he takes out uh, a flame and just put the the flame into uh, straight into his arm with a stick and it goes through him and he doesn't have any burns whatsoever that was really cool or or how when they use those uh, magical acorns that he had to throw and uh, which when he throws it into the area it's actually uh, freezes and it just breaks off or when he has to take one of those magical um, dust that he has that's given to uh, the high Alwyn and, and just froze up in the air it turns into a a bird uh, there's even funny moments too when the bird actually shits on <laughs> you know one of the dwarfs yeah the uh, the head dwarf he was like almost premature bald but he has a lot of hair too. Uh, there was even another scene where where the baby actually threw up on him too. Um. <laughs> and yes, they do call Rillo Peck. You know, they they kept calling him a lot. Even Matt Mulligan says it too. Yeah, he's no Peck. Bell Kilmer was uh, excellent in the film too, and. You know, the fact that he's a swordsman, and he's very good at it, definitely helps Willow on his quest. You know, even though they weren't getting along for a while, but then they, they tend to get better and better as they turn out. <laughs> so, it's, it's really cool. He even has his trusty sword to join in. And it really shows. I love the relationship between them. And Joanne Wiley, who, of course, was a warrior's daughter, 
of uh, Bemoda, she was very good too. Um, and the fact that they later fell in love uh, with both Matt Mardigan and Sosha, and, and of course, they were married in real life. So that so things were going around later. Um, but the rest of the cast were very good too. I mean, you got Gene Marsh playing the evil um, Bamoda. You could definitely see how an evil sorceress could look and feel. And Fran Rizel, you know, played by Patricia Hayes. Yeah, she was very stunningly beautiful at the time. Yeah, for an old woman, but you know, we know that she was the help. Uh, Billy Barfy, amazing. Um, Gavin O'Horley, yeah, he was fine. I even love the brownies too. They're hilarious, no doubt about it. I love the scenes where you know they always get into bigger trouble, or even when they went straight into the beer and they drink beer, <laughs> and they notice how drunk they are. It's hilarious. But so is the rest of the cast. They were all good. So I. I um, I really don't understand the mixed reviews that this movie got. I mean, what, what were they expecting, you know? Did they think that, you know, they had a vendetta with George Lucas after that? I, I just don't understand. Yeah, because I saw uh, Cisco and Ebert's review of the movie, and that was totally unsatisfying to watch. I mean, I guess they're just still stuck with uh, the mold that Lucas was doing. But then again, you know, they didn't like uh, Labyrinth Theater, so I don't know what's going on. But, of course, this was at the time in the 80s when we were getting a lot of those sword and sorcery films and fantasies like, you know, like Crow, Legend, Dragon Slayer, even Labyrinth joining in. And, of course, um, uh, the Dark Crystal to join in. Yeah, they, so they figured they had to go for more... Uh, fantasy films of the 80s, so it probably shows that, you know, this is why I love fantasies. I mean, they're always fun to watch. Yeah. And, um, I, I just love the film. It's, it's well done. That's what they were going to go for. Um, I find it pretty funny, though, too, because, uh, speaking of Cisco and Ebert, they actually nicknamed the two-headed dragon called Es Espersisk because I think um, I think that might have been because of um, after they gave negative reviews to his films, maybe that's probably why they they wanted to throw in a joke on them. Yeah, maybe they're just not in favor of critics. Yeah. Um, anyway, the movie was on home video because um, by RCA Columbia pictures home video because they had to pay 15 million dollars to Lucas to exchange the video rights because uh, MGM UA home video couldn't uh, release it because since they were having financial problems at the time um, they figured that they find it they figured that Alan Ladd Jr. decided to take the risk to make the investment of the film and and he actually abandoned uh, and for his advance, he, he used half of the the 35 million budget for for both theatrical and television rights. Uh, I I know they had to pay TV rights from Universal because they they uh, helped in hand. And then, but as the years followed, though, I, Lucasfilm Limited um, bought the rights uh, for Fox when they released uh, the DVD and VHS tape back in 2001. That's why you don't see the MGM logo. Yeah. And I know Imagine Entertainment uh, co-produced the film. That was uh, Ron Howard's production company uh, along with Brian Grazer. Yeah. So they help in hand too. Uh, but also has a wonderful score by James Horner, the late great James Horner, who's, who actually performs with the London Symphony Orchestra. It, it really sets the journey straight. Uh, I love the theme that they put into it, um, including uh, World, Willow's theme and, and all the rest. It's just it's beautiful, wonderful. Definitely has a fantasy feel to it and shows. Um, 
And it was a modic success when it came out uh, on May 20th. Uh, actually, um, so it did pretty well. I mean, it was at number one at the box office. Hoping that it'll earn as much money as all the other films did at the time. But they were facing competition with films like Crocodile Dundee 2, Big, and Rambo Free. Not to mention, it was starting to go straight with um, other f uh, summer blockbusters like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, for instance. Um, but sadly, it wasn't exactly a blockbuster hit as they anticipated, but they did what they could. But, what, but they did make more profit through home video, develop a cult following as the years follow, and everything was going great. So that's why I consider Willow to be the best fantasy film I've ever seen. You know, ever since I saw it as a kid, and as I grew up, I still love it. And this fantasy film really shows that all heroes can come in all sizes, whatever it's big or small or even tiny for that matter. You know, they, they join in and they can definitely have the best time of their lives. You know, and they can win. You know, no matter what. So anyway, that's uh, Willow. And I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Saboro, and I'll see you later. Bye.